It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope? Edward P. Morgan and Bill Downs, both of the CBS television news staff. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Dr. Heinz Kreckler, chief of the German diplomatic mission to the United States. Mr. Mr. Ambassador, we can get into the uh, high-blown diplomatic yeah. question soon enough. Let's try to start on a little bit more of a human level. What is the one thing, in your opinion, that is worrying the West German citizen most? Is it taxes? Is it food? Is it shelter? Is it the threat of the Russians? Or what is it, sir? Well, it's very difficult to describe this in one word. I think it's several things that they are longing for, desire for peace, that peace is preserved, desire that their unhappy brothers and sisters on the other side of the Iron Curtain are getting their human dignity and their freedom back again. And uh, then, of course, to have a greater stability in Europe uh, through European integration. I think that's what is foremost in their minds. Well, uh, Mr. Ambassador, we are proposing that uh, 12 d German divisions be formed. Now, in event that this plan goes through, do you think there's any chance that West Germany would do a uh, South Korea, uh, a Syngman Rhee, and oppose us in major policy decisions? Well, I wouldn't like to compare it uh, to conditions in other countries, but I can say this. First of all, it's not the question of putting uh, 12 German divisions into the field, but we regard what we are asked to do as our contribution to the sharing the burden of common defense. That is uh, what we are really ready to do, what the German people is prepared to do. So what we are asked to do and what we want to do is uh, to have uh, 12 divisions in a European army, not 12 German divisions, but 12 European divisions in which Germans serve. Mr. And that's ba quite a difference, if you Mr. Agree. Ambassador, perhaps we can, we can focus on that a little bit more tightly. Yes, gladly. If we, uh, if we ask you to uh, give your own assessment as to the significance of the recent elections in, with mis in which Mr. Adenauer was re-elected and the so-called splinter groups from the right and the left, both extremes, were routed. Uh, there's been a great deal of speculation of, on that from the so-called experts. Uh, it would probably be valuable to get your own. Gladly, Mr. Morgan. In my opinion, uh, the greatest uh, common denominator uh, of the election results is this. It's an acceptance of partnership by the overwhelming majority of the German people. And by this, I don't mean the advantages of partnership only, but also the burdens and the duties of partnership. Being partners of the free world, and uh, that I think is uh, uh, in what you can say in the broadest terms. Then one uh, issue that we are most happy about is the crushing defeat that the neo-Nazis suffered. They go didn't get a single seat in our parliament, and they got uh, not, I think, not more than half the votes even the communists got, and the communists didn't get a single seat either. You feel that, that there's no real danger, then, of a rise again of Nazi elements in West Germany? Well, I think, uh, Mr. Morgan, after this election, all observers agree that this danger is not existent anymore. Well, Mr. But you know that eternal vigilance is a price of liberty, and Bill, we know this. Bill Downs has just come back from a trip to Germany, yes. where he's been several times, and he's been back just a, f a few days, actually, and he's probably got yes, some know, pointed questions well to ask you yes. on that respect. Well, I didn't want to get into that yet, Ed, but the, uh, I would like to know, and I didn't have a chance to find out, but... Um, you say that the uh, German people are willing to put up 12 divisions into this European army. 
Okay. They are willing to share the burden of defense. Yeah. That is exactly what they mean, because they had really didn't want to put up uh, troops again, as you knew, only in the form of sharing the burden. How do, they, everybody how do, how do the young men who are going to form these divisions feel about it? Uh, I think uh, we can answer this question also by the election results. We think that uh, the young people, not very cheaply, but accept this uh, to share the burden as a duty and accept it as also by their participation in the elections. Well, Mr. Ambassador, we must be very realistic about these things, oh, and we know no that uh, the French, uh, very understandably, uh, have been frightened, uh, more than frightened, by some German policies before, and that probably conditions their reflexes as to the European defense community now. Uh, they seem to be, in the in most recent weeks, a little bit more encouraged toward getting into the European defense community with Germany. How do you think the situation looks at this moment? Well, I agree with you. I think the French reaction towards our election results was pretty much uh, similar to that in other countries, that they were also greatly encouraged by the crushing defeat of the neo-Nazis. And then, by the way, you know, the European defense community was as a French proposal and uh, we, uh, have, I think, have every reason to believe that it will come into existence. Well, it's been said, Mr. Ambassador, that the dilemma of Germany is that it must have an army strong enough to deter the communists, but at the same time weak enough not to frighten the French. What do you think of that? All I would say, uh, I wouldn't put it in these words, I would say that in, uh, when we are contributing to the European defense community, our contribution is fixed not by ourselves, but by consent of the partners. And the uh, other members, uh, members of the NATO, who are not members of the European defense community, have a say in this respect uh, in the planning also. So what uh, the size of the German contingent is not fixed by Germany, but is fixed by all the partners. Dr. Kreckler, obviously one of the main questions as to Germany is to whether it can be unified, and that brings up the question yes. of Soviet policy. They seem to have relaxed a tiny bit since the June 17th uprising, one way or another. What do you really think are the, are the realistic possibilities of, of such a union of West and East under the circumstances? Well, I think uh, we will have one day uh, this reunification. I How can it come about? Always asked uh, why I believe this is so, and one of the main reasons I am giving for this is the effect of world opinion. I think the public opinion throughout the world plays a greater role in uh, the developments in the world as we all estimate or think. And after the events, which you mentioned, following the 17th of June, when the population of the Soviet-occupied zone rose against their oppressors with bare hands against tanks, everybody in the world knows how these people feel. Uh, they made this uh, uprising under the slogan of free elections, and I, at the very day, the 18th of June, happened to be in Honolulu. That's pretty far away uh, from uh, Berlin. It's nearly half around the world actually is, and I can tell you I was very deeply moved by the reaction people even there at this great distance but, head to this. But Mr. Ambassador, does this not also mean that the Soviet uh, government realizes the feeling against the communist regimes or the Iron yes. Curtain? And oh. does that uh, not also mean that their grasp will tighten rather than loosen? No, in the long run, I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, supposing that in from now till spring, for example, there is no hope offered to those people behind the Iron Curtain, the East Germans, that there is no uh, four-power conference, there is no progress towards unification, do you think there's any possibility of an uprising again? Well, uh, of course you can't say this, uh, but uh, what I should like to point out is that uh, we are constantly giving them proof how we are thinking that we are standing at their side. First, there was this uh, program of giving food parcels. And now, as you have learned, uh, President Eisenhower 
answering a letter by Chancellor Adenauer said that the American people would be by the private organizations prepared to give clothing to those also. And by these the people know that we are at their side, that we haven't forgotten them. And as this is much more a human problem than a political one, much more, I think this has a great effect. Well, the French also and, and the Americans and the British have embarked on a new policy, it appears, that one of uh, saying that we will offer security uh, guarantees to the Russians. Do you, you think, think that's realistic? Oh, yes, yes very much so. Uh, this, uh, there's quite a story behind this. The first time such a plan was mentioned, uh, when I remember correctly, by President Eisenhower in his address before American newspaper editors. And then a second proposal along these lines was made by Sir Winston Churchill, British Prime Minister. And then Chancellor Adenauer made a proposal to use the European defense community as a starting point, if the other partners agreed to it, as a starting point uh, for a security offer, uh, including also the Soviets. And now this has been taken also up by a French spokesman, and so I think we are quite agreed on the Western side that we should uh, uh, work along these lines. Mr. Ambassador, as a last question, and I want you to ask to answer it in just a couple of words. You've been around the country a great deal. What do you think the people of America are most preoccupied with at this moment? Well, as we all are, with the question, how can we preserve peace? I think that is the first political problem we have to solve. Uh, in our time and if we all, and I think the American people, people realize very well that if we all work together, especially if Europe cooperates better than in the past, we will solve this crucial problem of mankind. Thank you very much, sir, indeed. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Edward P. Morgan and Bill Downs both of the CBS television news staff. Our distinguished guest was Dr. Heinz Kreckler, chief of the German diplomatic mission to the United States. <laughs> it's World Series time again. The best days of the year for the football, baseball fans. And this year again, the World Series is Longines time. Yes, all umpires of the American and the National League use Longines watches exclusively for timing all the games, including the World Series. Truly, the watch of first choice in the world of sport is Longines, the only watch in history to win 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and so many honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. That is why, throughout the world, no other name on a watch carries the prestige of Longines, the first choice in the world of sports, the watch of first choice with discriminating men and women everywhere. And yet, do you know that you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as seventy-one fifty? Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Tuesday nights, there's suspense on the CBS television network.